Thank you. My name is Dr. Richard Schaffer. I'm a clinical oncologist and clinical lead for benign and skin radiotherapy for Genesis Care. I'm also the medical director of XRAM. Today, I'm going to talk about radiotherapy for psoriasis, a literature review. So first I'll do an introduction about psoriasis and standard treatment. We'll talk about the radiotherapy rationale and depth considerations. I'll then take you through the literature review, um, really in summary with the effectiveness of different sites and then some conclusions. So psoriasis is a common chronic inflammatory skin disease. It affects approximately 2% of the population and symptoms include itch, dryness and cracking of the skin, and pain and disfigurement of the nails. It can severely affect quality of life of patients and 75% of patients say that they have moderate to large negative impact on their quality of life. It can also affect relationships and mental health. So the treatment depends on the severity of the disease and impact on quality of life, the presence or absence of psoriatic, psoriatic arthritis and any comorbidities. And the, in the UK treatment guidelines, first line treatment would be with topicals, for instance, with steroid creams or vitamin D. Second line would include phototherapy and systemic non-biological treatments such as methotrexate or cyclosporin. And third line would be with systemic biological treatments, for instance, atolimumab and infliximab. So biological treatments can be very effective for moderate to severe disease. For instance, the Tamacept, um, reduces the, uh, uh, reaches PASI 75 in 49% of patients with high dose of tanacept and only 4% of patients with placebo, so clearly very effective. However, there are some issues with biological treatments, um, and those would include incomplete clearance or recurrence in some patients, contraindications, and also long-term use has issues in terms of expense in particular, and also various risks. So radiotherapy offers a localized approach for a localized problem, particularly in difficult to treat areas such as nails, palms, scalp, genitals, or perianal skin. There's variable use worldwide, and it's very routine in some European countries, for instance, Switzerland or Denmark, but really it's rare use at the moment in the UK, the US, and Australia. So the principle of radiotherapy is to match the depth of the radiotherapy dose with the depth of the pathogenic process. So the pathogenesis of psoriasis is in the epidermis and the de dermo-epidermal junction, so around 0.1 to 0.3 millimeters depth. Radiotherapy has antimitotic activity in the epidermis and action on Langerhans cells, modulating dermal inflammation. So you can see that Greg's phrase, and which uh, penetrate to approximately up to 0.5 millimetres are ideal for treating psoriasis, which, uh, which, uh, where the pathogenesis is at 0.1 to 0.3 millimetres. And superficial x-rays um, can go further, superficial x-rays and electrons, which can go up to around 5 to 10 millimetres, can be used where there's thickened psoriatic nails or hyperkeratotic palmar plant of psoriasis. So we performed a literature review of radiotherapy psoriasis with a structured search in January 2021. We only looked for English articles in full text, not in textbooks, and we identified clinical reports from 1958 to 2016. The extractive data included the type of radiotherapy and dose fractionation, the type of study and number of patients, and the outcomes, and the findings were narratively synthesized. The overall results, we found 11 key primary studies, seven used Grenz rays, two used superficial X-rays, and two used, ele used electrons. The population in the studies ranged from between three and 67 patients, and they were virtually all adults. The follow-up was up to four months in most studies, although a few prospective studies had a longer follow-up but few studies used validated outcome measures or assessment criteria. And the highest level of evidence was the 2013 Cochrane Systematic Review on Nail Psoriasis. And the punchline line really is that most studies concluded that radiotherapy has a role in the treatment of patients with psoriasis, particularly in difficult to treat areas such as the scalp and hands and feet. 
So let's go through it in detail. Let's talk about the scout to start with. So talking about the first study, Johansson in 1987, this was a double-blinded control trial on 17 patients, and they treated one side of the scalp with steroids and active radiotherapy, and the other side of the scalp with steroids and sham radiotherapy, so essentially they pre pretended to give radiotherapy. Uh, the radiotherapy was with GREX rays, so very low energy X rays. Um, they gave a weekly dose of four gray, and they gave it six times for a total of 24 gray in six weeks. The outcome assessment was an observer rated score between 0 and 5 uh, using erythema, scaling, itching, and distribution, giving a total score of up to 20. The results there was almost complete healing in 88% of the patients at three months, and a reduction in severity score from 12 pre treatment, that was out of 20, to uh, 7 with steroid alone, and 2.5 with steroids plus radiotherapy. And at six months, 53% of the patients were still healed. The next study was Lindelof in 1988, and that was a randomized trial of Grenz versus Grenz plus steroids with 37 patients. The radiotherapy was given the same way with Grenz and a total of 24 gray, um, and there was healing in 78% of the patients overall. There was a reduction of uh, severity score with Grenz, uh, to 1.7, and with Grenz plus steroids to 1.6, with no significant difference in, uh, in reduction in severity. And at six months, 31% of the patients remain healed. There was then a more recent study, which was ret retrospective with 36 patients, and the radiotherapy was given in a, in a similar way, um, but between four and six gray, and given in a more empirical way between three and 12 times, albeit with weekly doses. And at six to eight weeks, there was a complete response of 36% and a marked response of 53%, therefore giving a um, complete marked response of 89%. And at the latest follow-up, which is very variable, eight out of 36 patients had a complete or marked response. So in summary, you can see that in the trials, that uh, percentage healed was between 78 and 89% if you count either complete response or good partial response as healing. And in the long term, between 22% and 53% was still healed. Now I'm now going to go just in summary through the other sites. So if we look at hyperkeratotic eczema and psoriasis of the palms and thoughts, there were two studies, Sumila. Uh, had a complete and partial response of a total of 94%, and a complete response still at 20 months, median follow-up in 36%. Fenton looked at 22 patients, and there was a complete and marked response of a total of 73%, and still had 50% uh, with a complete and marked response of, of four years. In Nails, the, the, the uh, picture was quite different. You can see that there were four studies here, and they ranged between a small improvement or a complete response of 4.5% to roughly a 30% uh, response. So not quite as good as scalp or hands and feet. And in palmar plantar pustulosis, again, not such a good response. So there was an 11% response in Ferris, um, no complete responses in Lindelof, and in Fenton, a marked response of 33%. Um, they said the improvement was sustained at three months. There weren't really long term results for the other two studies. So, in summary of the trials, in summary of the summaries, for the scalp, between 78 to 89% response of the short term, long term, 22 to 53%. Hyperkeratotic plants or souls, so eczema and psoriasis, 73 to 94% long term 36 to 50%. So I would say, it, you know, scalp and palms and soles really do quite well. Nails between four and a half and 30%, and palm and palms of the pustulosis is similar at 11 to 33%. I guess one question is why the lack of response in nails and palm and palms of pustulosis? I mean, you know, the possibilities are perhaps not enough dose, perhaps not enough depth, actually, because a lot of the time, you know, if you're using Grant's rays, um, you wouldn't expect it to be treating all of the disease. It might be that actually radiotherapy is the wrong treatment, possibly. 
Um, and another point is that nails, you really need follow-up for at least six months to allow regrowth of the whole nail to assess uh, response properly. So in conclusion, radiotherapy is effective in psoriasis of the scalp and hands and feet, but less effective for nails and other blood osteosis. The evidence is well established, but is with low numbers of patients and unvalidated outcome measures. So radiotherapy should be considered as a third line option for localized disease after phototherapy and or systemic non-biologicals and before biological treatments if they're contraindicated, not tolerated, or not effective, um, or if they're on biologicals, if they're resistant patches, that would be another area of study. And there are need, there is clearly a need for prospective studies with validated outcome measures. Thank you.